In the words of Diego Maradona, Carlos Tevez is the Argentine prophet for the 21st century. The Manchester City forwards courage and poise have earned him many more such accolades over the course of his career. He played for four different teams before moving to the Northern English club in the 2009-2010 summer transfer window. He has enjoyed great success at both club and international level, as well as amassing an impressive tally of individual honours. His story begins in a small town in Argentina. Carlos Tevez grew up in a sub-district of Buenos Aires called Cuidadelo, in the neighbourhood of Fuerto Apache, which accounts for his famous nickname, the Apache. He was born into a poor family in a working class neighbourhood. Fortunately for Carlos, a natural talent for football handed him the winning lottery ticket that would ensure his escape to a life of wealth and fame. He joined Boca Juniors at the age of 16 and made 75 appearances for the club in three seasons. By 2006, he was headed for Europe. After a brief stint at Corinthians, Carlos moved to West Ham United in the English Premier League. I believe two clubs were interested in signing me, but they had too many forwards. Each team had three or four forwards in my position. So what I need now is to play and to be good, getting my rhythm back. I think West Ham is a place where I'll be able to play straight away. So I decided on this team. In this first year, I will recover my rhythm and will be able to see what English football is like. That's why I took the decision to play with a team like this. His debut for West Ham saw him coming on as a second-half substitute in a one-all draw with Aston Villa on the 10th of September 2006. He had joined the club at the same time as his Corinthians teammate, Javier Mascherano. The two players were seen as prize recruits and West Ham were keen to ensure the world-class duo stayed at the club for many seasons to come. We've signed two world-class players uh, and no matter how long they're here, for, as far as I'm concerned, although I have assurances and I made sure of that, that they're not going in the next window, just to make you aware, um, that for a year, let's, let's enjoy them, let's enjoy their quality uh, and let's see where it takes us because we want to go to the next level. We want to challenge the, the likes of the big teams in this division and uh, this is obviously a route to do that. First and foremost, West Ham were very interested in our services and they made us a firm offer. Secondly, the fact is we are able to play in the Premier League, one of the most important leagues around. They were the main factors we chose West Ham. For a whole season here, we've got a great team. And at the end of that season, we can review it. And hopefully, um, we will have such success that these guys will stay with us uh, for not just one year, but two years, three years, maybe four years. Carlos Tevez's talent soon became apparent to the powers that be at Manchester United, who were keen to sign the forward. In July of 2007, it was reported that he had agreed to join United in a £20 million deal, subject to an appeal from West Ham. As I say, we're very, very confident based on what we've seen, based on all the discussions we've had um, over the course of the last few weeks, that uh, this will resolve in, in, in Carl Tevis' favour and hence he'll be free to join Manchester United and be a, a major part of our Alex's squad for next season. Given that timetable, you know, we're, we're still confident that um, by the time we kick off uh, the Premier League season he'll be um, training at Carrington. The West Ham supporters were incredible to me. I will never forget it. And so West Ham will always have priority. But if they are going to sell me, yes, I would like to play for a big European club. His dream came true, and his first year at Manchester United proved a very successful one. The club won the Premier League title. 
They also took out the Champions League trophy with five goals from Carlos, helping them to the crown. The next season yielded another Premier League triumph for the club, as well as a League Cup. The League Cup fifth round match was a memorable one for Tevez, who scored a quartet of goals in their 5-3 victory. Despite all this, with Carlos's two-year deal coming to an end, United had yet to sign him permanently, and rivals Manchester City indicated their interest in the Argentine. City has the ambition to become one of the biggest clubs in the world, and this for him was a decisive situation to make the move, and he's really happy to be here. In August 2008, Manchester City was bought by Abu Dhabi United Group. The new owners had plenty of money to spend and the takeover was immediately followed by a host of bids for high profile players. From the moment that Abu Dhabi United became the owners of Manchester City, everyone knew that we were a wealthy club with money to invest. The owners want to take the club as far as possible in world football. What happened last season was that a little too much expectation was generated by the fact that we brought in some new players. We knew that further new signings would arrive, and that is why today our squad contains some of the most coveted players in the game, like Colo Toure, Emmanuel Adibayor, Gareth Barry and Carlos Tevez. Having those kinds of players involved this season is going to be a great advantage for us. They broke the British transfer record by signing Brazilian star Rubinho for £32.5 million. He brings a great fighting spirit to the team as well as a great deal of ability. I think he is the complete player. City's new owners bought their chequebook to the club in the hope of turning the club into league contenders. The price paid for Robinho was high, but it was hoped that the acquisition would attract other high-profile players. With Man City, once they're in, uh, players' heads are turned. And I think um, it was the first couple of players that went there, um, Robinho for 32 million. Oh, he's a pretty good player, but I wouldn't think he's a 32 million part-time player. But having got one player in like him, now the others think, well, uh, he's there and maybe they're going to get some more and it'd be a pretty good team and we might win something and that means more trophies, more money, so we'll go there. Being a mid-table club, however, didn't make it easy to attract big-name players. Uh, but as a general rule, um, it's difficult for a mid-table club to attract players at that level. So it's taken Man City a couple of years to do that. Now they're attracting players. In the same year that they bought Carlos, the club also signed Gareth Barry, Rock Santa Cruz, Colo Toure, Emmanuel Adebayor and Yolion Lesco. Carlos's club honours included the 2003 Apuerta champions of the Argentinian Primera Division, the Brazilian Serie A Championship, two Premier League titles and a Champions League victory. Still in his mid-twenties, Carlos has plenty of playing years left. Carlos Tevez joined Argentina's national team in 2004. He has made 51 appearances so far, scoring a total of eight goals. It is quite an achievement just to make the team, given the strength of the players produced by the country. In his first year in the side, he was part of the country's gold medal winning team at the 2004 Athens Olympics. He was also part of the nation's 2006 World Cup campaign. Argentina was a part of Group C, which included the Netherlands, the Ivory Coast and Serbia and Montenegro. Argentina were arguably the strongest team in the group, and the players certainly believed they had what it took to win. We Argentine players are always going to give it our all to make Argentina come out ahead. And of course to do everything possible to bring the cup home. That's obvious. Carlos was an unused substitute in the team's first match against the Ivory Coast, which they won 2-1. Next up were Serbia and Montenegro. Argentina had the biggest win of the tournament, winning 6-0. Tevez came on in the 57th minute and joined the party, scoring a goal in the victory. 
Argentina then faced the Netherlands, who also remained undefeated. Carlos was in the starting lineup in the top of the tables clash, which ended as a scoreless draw. We know that Argentina is going to this World Cup with a lot of hope and a lot of expectation of playing the seven games. The objective is to play the seven games, that is to continue advancing, and if one plays the seven games that means they are in the finals. And that is what we want because it's been a long time since we've achieved that. The players are clear on that and they want it as all of us Argentines want it. Argentina finished on top of the group on goal difference and were drawn to play Mexico in the round of 16. They qualified second in Group D behind Portugal. Both teams scored early goals in the match but couldn't get a second. The match went into extra time and Maxi Rodriguez broke the deadlock in the 98th minute, sending the Argentinians into the quarterfinals. Carlos had had a reasonable tournament so far, but the public wanted to know if he would come through for them in the finals. First of all, we have to think about the team and not about myself. Secondly, in the last Copa America, I was on the bench and ended up playing in the last three matches at high level. I'm here to help. And if I come on, I will give it all I can because I don't know whether I'll take part in another World Cup. Host Germany made their way to the quarterfinals by finishing top of Group A undefeated. The matchup was sure to be tough for both teams. The game lived up to the hype. The teams were won all after extra time and the match went to penalties. Unfortunately, it didn't go the Argentinians' way. They lost 4-2. Bundled out of the tournament in the quarterfinals, the Argentines were determined to do better next time. They began the 2010 World Cup qualifying campaign in fantastic form. They had three comfortable wins from three matches before facing Colombia in round four. The Colombians won 2-1. If his team was having a bad day, things were even worse for Carlos, who was sent off during the loss for kicking fullback Ruben Dario Bustos in the 24th minute. Argentina drew their next four matches, and Carlos was again sent off in the round seven draw against Paraguay. He was penalised for a late tackle on defender Dario Verón. Having already earned a yellow card, he was immediately banished from the field. The draw left the Argentines with three wins, three draws and one loss. We need this because we are all fighting at the top. There's not much difference. This always happens during the qualifying round. It would be nice to get the points and be able to move out front a little more. On the 16th of October 2008, Argentina's Alfio Basile announced he would be stepping down from the role as head coach. Argentina's favourite son, Diego Maradona, immediately flagged his interest in the position. I wish Argentina wins the World Cup, and if they do, or even if they don't, I will fight to become Argentina's coach. That is something that I owe to myself. It would be a perfect dessert for my career. The idea of Maradona as coach of Argentina had plenty of appeal. There were, however, concerns about his ability and his experience as a manager. He had only managed two teams for less than a year each. Nonetheless, despite his lack of management experience, it was announced on October 29, 2008, he would take over as head coach of the national team. He started off in promising fashion, but when he oversaw a 6-1 defeat to Bolivia, equaling the team's worst ever margin of defeat, his critics came out of the woodwork. Fans became uneasy. Argentina is one of the giants of the game, and the possibility of not qualifying for the World Cup entered their minds for the first time in a long while. The team needed to win back their fans. 
People want a title from the national team, something that all the players are hoping for as well. I think that if you ask Argentines what they want, it is we win something. We need to win, to earn trust again. It's been a while since we last won. We've had several ties, and so we need to win and earn people's trust again. The loss to Bolivia hurt the credibility of Maradona as a manager. He faced much criticism from the media. It also took its toll on the team as a whole. Argentina had a proud history and the loss rendered them vulnerable to failure. Their next match was a 1-0 win against Colombia, keeping the critics at bay for the time being. They failed once again in round 14, where they were dealt a 2-0 defeat to Ecuador. Their next match lined them up against fellow soccer superpower Brazil, a daunting prospect for Maradona and the team. They indeed lost the match 3-1. The recent results did nothing to stem the criticism, which was beginning to irk Maradona. With two games remaining, they were in fifth place, facing the real possibility of failing to qualify. They finally came through, winning their last two games and qualifying for. After all the criticism he had faced, Maradona let off steam in a press conference after the qualification, telling members of the media to suck it and keep on sucking it. He received a two-month ban from football. The players stood by their embattled manager. For most members of the side, Maradona was a childhood icon, and his influence over the game cannot be overestimated. The approval of one of the game's greats means a lot for player confidence. His level of former excellence sets a high benchmark for the current crop of players to match but whether he has what it takes as a national coach remains to be seen. Having Maradona as a coach is a dream come true for Carlos Tevez, who idolised the Argentine hero growing up. The two players have a lot in common. Both are known for their attacking play. Both hail from poor towns near Buenos Aires. Like Maradona, Carlos uses his low centre of gravity to fire up short sprints past defenders. They both use their physical attributes to their advantage, playing a hard, courageous style of football. There is no doubt that Maradona also admires Carlos, dubbing him the Argentine prophet for the 21st century. High praise indeed from a man that many people worship as a god. Having known Carlos since he played with the Boca Juniors, Maradona has also said, Tevez is like a son to me. From the moment I met him, I felt like that. Maradona also came through the Boca Juniors ranks to become a superstar of the game. He played mainly as an attacking midfielder, tearing up opposition defences with his amazing dribbling ability and distribution of the ball. He made his name at Napoli, making 188 appearances and scoring 81 goals. He won a number of league titles with various clubs, but his most memorable performances were on the international stage. His greatest footballing achievement came in the 1986 World Cup, where he was crowned a hero. He won the Golden Ball as best player of the tournament, and his two goals in the quarterfinal against England have become legendary. Such performances have made him an idol for many young Argentines, such as Carlos Tevez, who has now come to terms with having his boyhood icon as a coach. Given that the two have already forged a strong relationship before Maradona took over as coach, and Carlos already held great respect for Maradona growing up, their player-coach relationship is no doubt a strong one. The relationship has already had a significant influence on Carlos as a player, Maradona's future as head coach will be decided at the 2010 World Cup. Meanwhile, Carlos will also need to put in a strong performance to cement his place in the team. Carlos Tevez's exploits off the field, including meeting his wife, Vanessa Mancillo, and having two children, Florencia and Katia. He is also something of a music star, 
He is the frontman of the group Piola Vago. The group, which also includes his brother Diego, released the song Lose Your Control, which hit the charts in Argentina. He also gives back to the community where he can, supporting charities such as UNICEF, which aims to provide long-term humanitarian and developmental assistance to children and mothers in developing countries. Among his many individual honours is the Campeonato Brasileiro Best Player Award in 2005, which he won during his time at the Brazilian club Corinthians. He only played for the club for two seasons, but has often spoken of his affection for the country. The successful season yielded 38 appearances and 25 goals for the club, and winning the award formed one of the highlights of his career so far. Yes, to tell the truth, I'm very happy because all of the people chose me and very grateful for everything and to be named the best player in Brazil. Ronaldinho is tired of being chosen as the best player in the world, so it's only natural. Tevez is a great player and he deserves it. Carlos also has attracted his fair share of controversy, thanks to the odd run-in with the law. He has had his car impounded by police after he was caught driving without a full UK driving licence and illegally tinted windows in 2009. However, such minor indiscretions have done little to damage his standing as a footballer. As a star player at Corinthians, he was selected to present Brazilian president Luis Iñaco Lula da Silva with a club shirt during his visit to the team. During his career so far, Carlos has earned such individual honours as the Olympic Golden Boot in 2004 and is a three-time winner of the South American Footballer of the Year. There is no doubt that Carlos Tevez will be remembered as a great player for his stunning exploits on the pitch, both as a team player and an individual star. But away from the football field, he is also building a legacy as a father to his two daughters, Florencia and Katia. A strong family life translates to a strong work life, and although his relationship with his wife Vanessa has been put under pressure several times over the past few years, the couple have stayed together. Carlos will have the benefit of his family's strong support as he attempts to take his already impressive game to the next level in the upcoming World Cup. No doubt, they, like millions of people watching around the world, will be waiting to see if Carlos Tevez is indeed the Argentine prophet of the 21st century.